Hey there everyone and welcome to another school tutorial. In this one I'm going to be going through Mana Bolts, Polymorph and Protection Bubble. These two skills have some really cool effects um, and they're very useful in combat. Saying that, Mana Storm is one that I don't like quite so much. Uh, it's more of your bog standard skill too. So wizards are all about dealing damage um, around them in an area, you know, crowd control stuff. That's what they were originally and Mana Storm is the essence of that. It creates a storm around you that does a load of damage to enemies and it also slows them. So having those two effects on it is pretty cool and um, it is very useful in PvE. So I would say this skill doesn't have much use in PvP because uh, the damage is just is dealt over time which is kind of less good and also it's just not that much damage for the, the cooldown it has. As opposed to Mana Bolts which does it all instantly and it does the same amount of damage and then you know basically Mana Bolts is your PvP version, Mana Storm is your PvE version because Mana Bolts does it to a single target instantly, which is exactly what you want there, and Mana Storm does it to loads of enemies um, over time, which over time doesn't matter in PvE, and it does, you know, the slow effect too. So this is your PvE version of Mana Bolts, you can think of it, and the damage it is pretty decent. It does 6 hits of 58%, um, which, yeah, it's a lot of damage to those enemies, and the Skaroons, what they mainly add is just more damage. Um, so they don't change the, the slow effect at all, um, I think some of them, like, they will push enemies back and stuff when they get created. But basically, um, it's it's mostly about the damage and and the slow effects. Um, I think, oh yeah, some others, like, they make your you harder to hit when you're stood inside it and stuff. That's only to, like, certain types of attacks and everything, so it's not that important. Basically, this is a really good skill if you want to go stand next to the boss and then use this. And as other enemies come in, they're going to die off. And otherwise, you know, you might be able to use it as a slow effect to, like, control things. Um, so, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty good. Um, I, well, I say pretty good. It's very good for, like, for that stuff in PvE. So, Skurruns, you're really looking at that extra damage uh, more than anything else, I believe. Um, unless there's some, like, really cool effects which come in. And uh, they don't affect the range of it, even though some... So, this one looks the same as the standard one. But if we go to one, like... Um, uh, one like Void Ring, this one m makes it look really big however it's actually the same area they all have the same area and it's a huge area that it hits. So anyway that's what this skill is about, uh, this skill is about. Uh, it's about damage and hitting in hitting in that area, you want to use it in PvE um, but not much else and then in terms of the skill points um, it depends kind of on your elemental stats. Um, if you watch the video where I went through it in Arcane Beam, it's exactly the same. If your elemental stats are high, uh, like 200% or more, then you kind of want to keep this at 10 out of 99 and pick the, the one which uh, fits your build, um, the, your elemental build. If your elemental stats are lower, you may see benefit from taking this up uh, a bit higher. You may want to like, you know, do 30, 40, although actually this is a fairly good candidate for 99 because the cooldown only increases from 10 to 15 rather than uh, most of them which double. So this is pretty good for, for playing high if you want loads of damage on it. However, once your elemental stats are high, then you want to uh, you want to lower it down to, to 10 to get the better damage per second. This isn't a primary damage skill, even though I'm saying it's good for damage. It's actually less than like um, Arcane Beam and some others. So you don't want to focus on it too much. Uh, so you don't need that, uh, that low cooldown so much. Um, and you don't want to focus on it too much for damage. The next one we're going to talk about is Polymorph. This one is probably my favourite skill. It's the most overpowered skill in the game because it got revamped and now does tons of damage. So basically you've got to have this at 99 points. If you have it at 10 points it only lasts 6 seconds which is much less useful and um, with Skurins does half the damage. So you're not going to find too much benefit from it when you have it at 10 points. However, if you get it to 99, which this is the best candidate for getting to 99 first, it is seriously good. What it does is it will um, turn all the enemies nearby into, well, sheep right now. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it hits a fairly small en uh, area. However, it's when you add screwings that it goes crazy. And uh, the cooldown seems really long. It, you know, it doesn't look that good. But what happens is when, as you add screwings, it gets completely overpowered. So this... Um, the polymorph duration in PvP is 4 seconds rather than 12, uh, but 4 seconds is really, really long. When most stuns are 2 seconds, a 4 second polymorph that you can then chain into a 2 second stun is crazily good. Now if you add a Skurun, what happens is it increases the damage 
Um, sorry, it, it adds damage because it deals no damage otherwise, and it also increases the range dramatically. So when I use this, you'll see it just hits like, well, it didn't hit those enemies that were up there, but it hits everything that was like down here. It hits a huge range, and so all of those get polymorphed for 12 seconds and then take 12 hits of the damage. That's also elemental damage too, so if your elemental stats are high, it does crazy damage. This skill is, I, ca I can't rave about it enough, it's just amazing for both crowd control, damage dealing, everything. And if you use a cooldown potion, its cooldown is like 13 seconds, which means there's only one second where they're not polymorphed, and then you can just reapply it. It's absolutely crazy, and um, yeah, in PvP, brilliant too. So that's what this skill does, and you want to add one of the screens that adds loads of damage on and increases the range, otherwise it's like pointless really, the base skill is rubbish. Um, but yeah, that's what this skill does and uh, really do check it out as soon as you've got enough points to use it because um, yeah it just you know you can see the damage there like 30, 30 million um, anyway so that's what that skill does the next one is protection bubble this is all about defense in the base skill however Skurians change this so what this does is it adds a bubble onto you onto your character for the next few seconds that has a certain percentage of your health uh, which basically they have to deal that damage before then you start your health starts getting hurt again and the bubble pops the bubble doesn't actually pop when it when it gets destroyed which is a bit confusing but anyway basically the, the use this for some defense the cooldown isn't too long either uh, so it's pretty cool for that I'll show it now in in combat although there's um you know these enemies don't actually really hurt me but you'll see here they start hitting me and uh, yeah I'm just parrying everything but um, they would be doing zero damage until it's destroyed and then they start hurting me. So this is a good little top up uh, for when you're going to take lots of damage. You've got frost armor for your main defense buff and then when you're going to take some heavy hits or your health is getting low and you need to you know survive for a bit use protection bubble and it'll keep you surviving. Where skurins make this a lot more complicated is they add um, way more damage. So yeah they, they add kind of damage effects onto it and this was a main trend in with Skurins on the wizard class is they're trying to turn some of these defense skills into damage skills too because um, originally wizard was just lacking loads of damage so these Skurins like Fari Aura and Curse Protection uh, that are out right now what they do is as enemies hit, hit them um, hit you then each time they hit you they take uh, some damage in return what this means is in PvP, this becomes pretty much your best damage dealer. It goes absolutely mental, and um, people need to like watch out for it. If you put it on, they need to not attack you for a bit. And yeah, so that's that's where this comes into play, and it becomes absolutely crazy for damage dealing. In PvE, not quite so much. It's still more of a defense skill, but in PvP, you want to be using this to, to deal damage to people. You want to catch them out so they attack you um, when you have this on. I actually have a whole guide about that, so if you go look on, on the forum for my Fiery Aura guide, you can read all about uh, all about that and how it works and stuff. I won't go into all the details. Um, so that's what Skurins add, they make they turn into a damage skill and uh, add extra useful effects. Um, in terms of the points you want to put into it, um, basically you want to keep the cooldown low. By putting it to 99, it makes the cooldown go from 20 seconds to 30 seconds which just means that you can't use it so frequently and to be honest the the bubble is big enough that 75 percent is is perfectly fine um so you don't need that to go up to 150 percent that it does so yeah just keep it low keep it frequent to use and especially because it's actually more of a damage skill um you want to be using it as frequently as possible in pvp because you know it's your best damage skill really so yeah you want to be using it as as often as possible and uh keep that cooldown low so I hope that covers everything on that skill and these three skills. As you can see, pretty interesting ones, very good ones, and uh, you should definitely not, uh, not pass on these. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.